So Dr. Schultz, today we want to talk about prostate cancer bone metastases. And I understand that this is a, a really scary word to a lot of patients, but I think in your practice and just from talking to you and my experience at PCRI, we've seen a lot of really incredible stories of people um, having their bone mets, you know, disappear with certain medications. So first off, when do bone metastases normally occur in the prostate cancer uh, time frame? Well, if people do the, you know, the proper thing and get their PSA tested and uh, catch prostate cancer when it's still localized, it's very unusual to see bone metastasis in less than 10 to 20 years. The um, uh, pip, uh, modern treatment will put people into remission and then uh, hormone therapy will keep the disease in check for 10 to 15 years. So bone metastasis are something in the real distant future, and thankfully only in a small percentage of people. Most people end up being cured if they're diagnosed at an early stage. So bone metastasis uh, in men that um, haven't been screened, uh, you know, start to occur if the PSA, you know, goes above 20 or 30, although there are exceptions to every rule, but, uh, and become much more common when the PSA gets up in the hundreds. So. In this new phase of technology when it comes to imaging and prostate cancer, what is the best way to detect bone metastases in prostate? Yeah, right now there's research being done with PSMA PET scans. And these are, I've been describing them as the biggest breakthrough since PSA. And far more accurate, very specific, only for prostate cancer. And so if people can get access to that type of scan, it really beats everything else. In the past, we'd have to do a bone scan to look at the bones, like we're talking about, and then a CAT scan to look for any enlarged lymph nodes, or an MRI to look for enlarged lymph nodes. And when it comes to PSMA, I mean, they can go to our website and look at different clinical trial centers because it's not FDA approved yet. Um, but your experience has been, what type of uh, experience have you seen with those PSMA scans? What, How small are the tumors that they're detecting? Right, so if you're looking at bone scans and CAT scans, you need something, a tumor maybe a half inch across. PSMA PET scans can pick up things that are an eighth of an inch across. So uh, they are detecting things so much uh, earlier and at a time when they're gonna be more easy to treat. What type of treatments are best when it comes to bone metastases? Well, with bone metastases, we're talking about prostate cancer having become a life-threatening illness. A lot of prostate cancer is not life-threatening, and a minimal, even a, a monitoring approach is a perfectly a fine uh, way to treat it. But once the disease has waved a flag and said, I can spread, I can get in the bones, then we're talking about uh, something that is potentially life-threatening. and that usually means a combination of available therapies, systemic therapies with first and second generation hormones, uh, maybe even a short course of chemotherapy, and then uh, radiation treatment directed to all sites of, meta of the metastatic disease. Uh, so you wanna basically use every available treatment to eradicate the disease as thoroughly as possible. In those different combinations, are there more side effects when you're doing hormone and chemo together versus others? Like, is there a particular protocol that you would suggest? There does tend to be more side effects because if you look at radiation, chemotherapy, hormone treatment, they all have one common denominator, and that is they can cause fatigue. And fatigue uh, can become cumulative when you add more and more treatments on. If the patients are proactive and you know go on a very strong exercise program to keep their, uh, keep their muscle mass up. Uh, they do pretty well, even with combinations of treatment. If they're unwilling to exercise, it can become very, very debilitating. Where do the bone mets normally go in the body? I know a lot of people, um, when they see bone metastases, sometimes there's multiple cancers involved. They're trying to figure out which one's prostate, which one's not. So where do these normally travel to? So most common site of spread is closer to the prostate in the pelvic bones. Um, second most common site would probably be the backbone. And uh, in, whenever we're talking about bone metastasis, we should mention that there's practically no emergencies in the prostate cancer world. Everything moves at a very slow pace. But one exception is that if the uh, bone metastasis in the backbone start pushing on the spinal cord, the major nerve that runs down and controls your legs, 
Uh, that can be an emergency because people can develop paralysis. Uh, so people that have uh, are aware that they have bone metastasis should always uh, be informed that if they're, uh, they develop any sudden new back pain or a- any unexpected leg weakness, they need to go to the emergency room right away. Don't even wait till the next morning. Because with timely radiation treatment, that metastatic site can be eradicated and the uh, spinal cord activity can be preserved. Uh, if it's allowed 24 to 48 hours to um, be non-functional, that is the, the metastasis push on the cord and they uh, choke off the blood supply to the cord, permanent paralysis is a possibility. It's called spinal cord compression. It's pretty much the basic only emergency that we see in the prostate cancer world. So when it comes to the bones themselves, is there anything that patients, you know, does the, the quality of the bone as far as it being weak or strong in any way affect how they can handle treatment when they have metastasis? Well, perhaps to a small degree, but more important is that aging men are already losing calcium and developing osteoporosis with age. And then when you put them on testosterone deprivation, that accelerates the process. Uh, the weakening of the bones from the cancer directly is more common with other types of cancer. It can occur with prostate cancer, but prostate cancer usually causes sclerotic metastasis. So in a sense, you could say it's even strengthening the bone a little bit. So pathologic fractures from cancer itself are much less common with prostate cancer than other cancers, but uh, they can occur. So I know one treatment in prostate cancer when it comes to metastasis, we have Zofigo and we have Lutetium, so injectable forms of radiation. Can you speak to how those work? And have you seen that they've really eradicated bone metastases and people have gone into remission? Yeah, they are effective medicines. The, um, usually if there's only a limited number of metastatic sites, we'll use beam radiation. But if there's more than a half a dozen spots, then uh, there are uh, products like Uh, Zofigo, which is FDA approved. It's radium um, injected into the bloodstream and it concentrates around the tumors and uh, delivers a high dose of radiation to eradicate bone pain and uh, cancer cells because people have been shown to live longer with this treatment. You mentioned lutetium. That's not yet FDA approved. It is uh, being um, actively researched and I believe is FDA approved in other countries like Australia and Germany. And uh, we've had a few patients that have gone overseas and have done well. They've responded nicely, even in situations that, uh, where their other treatments had stopped working. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like more information about bone mets or any of the topics that we discussed today, you can go ahead and visit our website, pcri.org. Go ahead and visit our description to find more information in the timestamps of the video so you can see more about the questions that we asked. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us share prostate cancer videos with other patients all around the world. We hope you have a great week.